Hey folks, it's 6.30. We'll start the meeting. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We're not going to approve me meeting minutes tonight. We don't have the right mix of the uh, selectmen here. So, public comments. Any public comments? <coughs> yes, sir. Steve Berry. Uh, I live here in Brookfield. And I was wondering if you received the email I sent to you regarding uh, Kingswood Lake. Yes, we did. Would you like to talk to us about it? Um, yes. Uh, I've been here for about 20 years, and I've heard off and on rumored that we have access to Kingswood Lake, <clears throat> but no one could tell me, tell me where, point it out. No one took me by the hand to you know, do it. <clears throat> and I've always heard that, whoops, me, Dan Road, or Kate Lane is private. So that's no trespassing. So how can I get onto Kingswood Lake with the canoe? to, you know, paddle around or to fish, and I'm seeking that. I understand <clears throat> Map 17, Lot 11, is owned by the state of New Hampshire, and that is kind of where I heard we might be able to get in legally, but if I can't get down the road legally, then I'm still trespassing, and I'm trying to get that addressed, so I don't get pinched for something silly like that. Okay. As you know, I live on Kate's Lane, mm -hmm. so I will recuse myself from this discussion and let Brian <coughs> address it. Well, I've heard the rumors all along, too, and I've, you've been here only like maybe five years longer than I, um, that there was always some sort of public access, and it went away. I, I don't understand how it would go away. Um, I've looked, I can't find any easements or right of ways that are <coughs> at least public that I can find to get down to that lot that allows access to the lake. Mm -hmm. I do know that lot there though, and that was the lot that was, um, that people have referred to in the past as the means of access to the lake. Mm -hmm. But it, it's almost landlocked because you can't get to it. I've not found any other way of getting out there and no one's given me a, a good explanation other than it. And I'm, I'm looking for permission, you know, from the, you know, people, I guess there are seven uh, owners along uh, Cape Lane. Yep. Uh, but, you know, how do I do that? Or do I have to go knock on their door and say, do I have permission to cross your land by using this road? Right. And <clears throat> I've also looked and determined that uh, in the state of New Hampshire, any lake over the 10 acres in size, uh, needs to have public access, mm -hmm. and I think it used to be what Cook's Pond, uh, and it's now Kingswood Lake, is over 10 acres, so it's like, okay, we should, we should, we should, but, you know, I don't want to get you know, pinched by the police because I'm trespassing. Right. <laughs> and I don't know if you've noticed, and last year, you know, I did recently, you know, drive down, launch my canoe, Went out with the dog, that was fine. <clears throat> but someone's put on boulders right there, you know, where you can almost park or, or watch off. And, you know, when you're talking <clears throat> boulders the size of you know, your chairs, it's like, ah, I guess they're meaning no trespassing. So, I. No, there's boulders on some. that lot 11? It's, or, would you, or could you tell? I don't know if they're physically on lot 11. I think a couple of them would have been. Yeah. The other ones would have been on lot 13. I haven't been down there now to <clears throat> see if they've been removed or they're still there. Or, but it's on the, uh, well, it's close you can get to the water. Right, right. <clears throat> so it's just a point of frustration. <coughs> and I finally decided to stir the pot and say, uh, well, if we can make, well, we'll make that a public road to, you know, lot 11, 
then I know the uh, state of New Hampshire will go ahead and make that available for us to, to launch. I'm not looking for a boat launch. I'm not looking for a big picnic area. I just want to be able to you know, park my car and legally launch a canoe. Okay. Um, I don't have any answers for you right away. I did see your oh, email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be something we're going to have to research legally if, if there is a means of, of getting there or making it accessible. Um, and then if so, how do we go about doing so? Um, so let me well, let me do a little bit more research okay. on it. I may even call to, uh, our um, town council and, and just ask if she has any input or in, could she guide me to what we need mm -hmm. to do if there's a, if, if there's anything we can do mm -hmm. um, because I suspect there was probably access to that lot and through time it somehow went away. That's mm -hmm. that's my guess, um, but that doesn't mean it's legal. Yeah, it, it could have been how they you know kept recording things and. Right. Then didn't bother, you know, saying to the middle of the road, but yeah, you know. and that's what I'm saying. Could there have been sort of some sort of public, e you know, easement on the road or right away? I, I just, I, I just don't know. But uh, I've, I've looked. I can't find anything on it. I, I couldn't either. I know that a lot of uh, thirteen owns half the road, and but if you look at uh, David's, I think it's lot nine. <clears throat> it's like he owns the whole road. Yeah. And you know it fluxes back and forth, so I, I need guidance and such. But okay. I, I'd also like to be able to fish. I've, I've seen a couple of beautiful trout in there. Yeah, yeah, I've heard the rumor that there's a lot of good fish out there. Yeah, and, and I know that uh, I think on our I've looked at the maps that are available online, and they say the Department of Transportation owns. Uh, Map 17, a lot 11, but when I contacted the state, they said no DES owns it. That would make more sense if they were. Yeah. So that's fine, and they said, hey, you know, if you've got public, if public assets down to the earth, then they'll take care of the lot. They won't. Right. It won't be uh, our nickel. Okay. So I uh, just wanted to you know, see if he had it. I know it's not on the agenda, so it was just during public comment. Okay. No, okay. it's worth you know checking into, and um, I'll get back to you when, so once I get some okay. so some of these guides of what what we will need to do, and if it's if it's as simple as just going down and you know just checking all the old deeds, or is it going to be more than that? And it will yeah. cost money and so on. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Ed. Just for the record, I represent you down in Concord. Uh, I also serve on the Fishing Game and Marine Resources Committee. Uh, I did learn that the state has a, uh, a water access committee, which we could actually go to and say that this lake is here. We want to know where the access point is. That way we can uh, figure out what lot they own, what can be done, and what <clears throat> public access brings you to that lot. Because mm -hmm. nobody can stop you from accessing is public, so there has to be access. So we could get together, walk around to see where that lot is and what's the access point, and then go down to Concord and meet with that commission to find out mm -hmm. what steps have to be done to okay. get this rectified. Thanks. Okay. Treasurer, Mary Lou. So um, I have. Uh, finish the Primex workers' comp audit for 2018, so that's all filed with the workers' comp um, auditor and company. And I've also finished the quarterly payroll tax return forms. They're ready to mail tomorrow. I've given you, and thought I posted on the website, the financial statements as of March 31st, um, and I'll repost them tonight a little. And um, I think that's probably it for me. So if you've got any questions on those, I've also replaced the copies that are in the common office so that they're up to March 31st, 2019. And other than that, it's bills and checks. 
So we've taken in 30,000 on that, that, was, that was that one lot, that was only the, the lot we bought to the 40. The yield tax is where, oh, we did the lumber reimbursement. Okay. That's what's confusing me, okay. There is money. Yes, I was just bringing up that on the yield taxes, there is a, a, a negative $2,200 for 2019, which, but we had to reimburse because we had to fix a timber tax. So. Yeah. It was fixed this year. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tax collector. Yes, I um last on the twelfth we did our tax lien for the 2018 mm -hmm. levy year. Um, it's interesting because it's the lowest number of parcels we've ever had. Um, last year. There were 28 parcels that went to lien. This year there were 11, which is quite a difference. Um, and the amount of the total tax lien went from 54,000 down to 44,000, so that's a ten dollar less, which is also the lowest we've ever had. So how much? Taxes. How much are we carrying total now? Do you know that? On the 2000, on the 2018 levy, we're carrying $44,578. Earlier I don't, I do have it. And I do have a, uh, I actually have a receivable for you. So that it used to be about, 100, about 150000 right? And the bottom figure will tell you all 82. the years. 82, that's half of what we normally carry. Yeah. It's, um, it's good. That's your copy. Okay. And here is your copy of the tax lien itself. Oh, this is for the deed, for the uh, so liens. Everything has gone to lien, so as you can see, it's, um, we're down to one page for all three years, which is um, all three outstanding years, which is, which is well. 82. I've never seen it that long. No, it's oh, it's never been it was 50. Never been that long. So everything seemed to go well. Um, I did ask Mary Lou for a check for the Carroll County Registry of Deed because I had two um, current use change that need to be done. One was the property that. Um, we ended up abating the current use change, but I still have to remove that in the registry of deeds. The other is a piece of property that <coughs> went to lien for the current use change last year, and that has been paid now and is taken off also. And that fee would have been included in what was done originally with it. So, But Mary Lou said that I don't need a check, that I can just put it on the account. The registry of deeds when I have to do those two current use change. I'm going to ask you our password. We'll tell you what the password is later. Okay. <laughs> You'll need you trust me with it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll give you the account number again. I know. Okay. I can't remember that. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> that's so everything is running, everything is going good. Um, I did want to probably should mention at this point that basically, believe it or not, we are into thinking about our next tax bills going up. Um, I'd like to have my warrant by the 15th of May. You're required to get your warrant by the 15th of May. Yes, I'm required. <laughs> I was being nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's late. laughs> so, and it'll be due we have to July 1st. They do July 1st, regardless of when, and um, I don't know if I'll bring up the awesome topic of whether or not we're going to send out the newsletters again. So that would be up to powers to be to decide whether we want that. I guess that's the life part of it, is getting, getting to be getting the newsletters if we do send them out. Okay, anything else? So,
Commission meets May 1st. We're going to have a talk by the forester who did the work down on the town land. Um, he's proposing that we cut some wood. It was harvested multiple times, but there's one large tract that was not touched. And he's suggesting that we do some selective harvesting down there. At the same time, we're going to talk about what we should do next door. This forest is just a mature mess. Mm -hmm. How do you bring it back? And when you go to bring it back, I think that becomes messy also because you have to do some heavy logging. Yeah. So that'll be on the agenda on uh, May 1st. Heritage Commission. I, as most of you know, this is uh, the 225th anniversary of the founding of the town of Brookfield. So I decided, in my inimitable wisdom, that I should give townspeople a little bit of history each time there's a selectman's meeting. So here's tonight's. This year the town of Brookfield celebrates the 225th anniversary of our founding. If you attended the town meeting on March 12, 2019, you heard our town moderator, Dr. William Marsh, read the minutes of the first town meeting in Brookfield in March of 1795. The town of Brookfield was actually incorporated on December 30th, 1794. As you may be aware, we are, were originally part of the town of Middleton. At that time, to them, we were called the Second Division. And according to Middleton's town book on November 12, 1793, they voted in the negative for building a meeting house in the Second Division, namely Brookfield. The first name suggested for Brookfield was Springfield, but that was rejected because so many states already had a Springfield. So Brookfield, we became. We know that the first town meeting was held at the home of Richard Hansen. It's about a mile and a half down Route 109, um, since his was the first frame house built in Brookfield. It was held in March of 1795, and four days after that first town meeting, Richard was granted a license to operate a public house. It would probably not have been uncommon for the men that attended that first town meeting to have had a nip before conducting the town's business. Remember in 1794 only men attended the town meeting and all men in town were required to do so. No women were allowed. Also remember in 1793 I mentioned that Middleton voted not to build a meeting house in Brookfield. Our townhouse was next mentioned at the annual meeting in March of 1804 when the town voted to build a meeting house, but nothing was done till 1807 when an article appeared on the warrant. It read, to see if the town will vote to buy one acre of land near the corner, since this was called Brookfield Corner, in said town to build a meeting house or to vote to choose a committee to say where the center should be and where the acre of land should be bought. Eight years went by during which no building was erected. The collapse of the floor at Daniel Wiggins' house precipitated a meeting in April 1815 that was convened to consider building a townhouse for meeting in public worship. 
I will talk more about our townhouse in the future, but just to let you know, the first mention of a town meeting at the townhouse was in 1823, and every town meeting has been <coughs> held in that historic building since then. This year was our 196th town meeting held in the townhouse, so in four years we celebrate 200 years of town meetings in that building. It will be a big day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is that structure still standing? That the, where the first meetings were held? Uh, you know, I did not drive down there. The okay. address is actually in the book, our town history, and I can give it to you after the meeting. Route 109. Not yes. Not Governor's Road. Um, actually, it goes to Governor's Road at that point. So it's down Governor's Road. Down Governor's Road. Because there's some old houses down there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the other thing I'd like to do is we had in the vault, um, when we started this process, um, some VHS tapes. And um, I'd like to thank, publicly thank Ed Como for turning them into a DVD. It was, um, one of them was the a videotape of the 19, okay, I'm going to get it wrong, the 1994, so the Towns Bicentennial town meeting where they created many, did many of the things that we did the other night, although that some of them were in costume. It just, to me, was a wonderful experience to see people that are no longer here, people these, this building is named after, and um, it was just really cool. So I passed it along to other Heritage Commission members, but wonderful to see people that really help this town grow. That's it. Thank you. Uh, cemetery trustees aren't here. Great review, review committee. What's the question? You are reviewing, yeah. you are reviewing a grant. Yes, Looking for the status of that review. Yes, we have to. We have to meet. There's another one coming. Another grant coming. I was handed on last two meetings ago. You're talking about that one? No. Okay, so there's a third one. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll try to put the grant review uh, committee together. Um, one member was out of town, off and on, and the other one was very busy, so we have to get together again. So I'll, I'll schedule that. And where is that grant? be coming from Craig. Remember at town meeting he talked about getting some help on refurbishing those books? Oh, they must play current. So he has to have that in July 1st? That's what he said, July 1st. Well, the process would be he comes in, hands it to you, and then you vote to trigger the grant review committee so it's handed off to us properly. So you don't have grant with you now. You know, he's giving us a heads up. It's coming. Okay. okay. Road engine is in here. I'm going to set in, I'm, I'm going to eat, survey the email once the selectman and Ed to <clears throat> set up meeting time. Type of road projects, um, paving, and all that good stuff so we can stay on track. Um, so you'll see that hopefully we'll do one night next week or two. And I'll ask Lori to make it public. Sound good? Yeah. Be a special selectman meeting. It will be if you guys want to attend, which I imagine it will. <laughs> so, okay. If not, it'll be other uh, Nothing on the Zoning Board of Adjustment, Forestry Management, you're not here. Any other boards or committees? Okay, paving update. You just gave us the paving update? No. <coughs> uh, parking lot work, we had a, we'll wait for Rick to get back. We got a, a proposal for $8,000 to resurface the parking lot here. 8,000 and change. Uh, Six and change, I think. Six and change? Oh. Yeah, I thought it's an eight something I talked about. So, what is resurfacing you? Is that the gravel east stuff? Yes. Yeah, it's going to yes. be the fine crushed stone with a yes. quarter inch out gravel mixed in and more or less grate it out, lay it out, and then roll it out. And, and I've had feedback already that. Some people are saying, pave the handicap area. We don't have a budget for it. I tried to 
get that going. <laughs> I got shot down. So we, we don't have money in the budget for it, right? Unless we want to go dig it out somewhere. We don't have money in the budget for this either. <laughs> okay. That was a line item. Oh. Okay, so I don't know. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, let's not talk to it. Yeah. Okay, so your policy procedures, we were going through all our ordinances, policies, and procedures to see if they're current, up to date, reaffirm that we want to follow them. Uh, Rick had the action item of talking to the attorney to make sure we knew what policy we had to follow to reaffirm them, whether we had a public hearing, whether we just have a collective meeting and say we're, these are still good. So that's working in the process. A year or so ago, we put meters on all our structures for changing the propane usage. <coughs> so we could get a handle on where our propane is being used. And what we can, and our, our propane bill is about 6000 7000 4000 yeah. We can look. Shoot, I have the spreadsheet. But it's right here. Yeah, it's, it's there. Really. But this is typically the last, we just had a delivery, we may have had one more delivery in April. We just got one. And, um... 7000 we budgeted for. $7,000 per year. Um, but that's for this three, three months only. Yes. All right, so we put 7000 in because we thought that was going to be the number. Half of it, half of it goes to keeping the schoolhouse and townhouse warm. So we're talking maybe $3,000 a year to keep that facility warm. There's been some discussion, do we want to drain the pipes and turn the heat off? Save $3,000. It is our, our emergency shelter. So that's the decision that has to be made. The, the other usage is here in the garage and it's uh, Four to one, four, four times more usage in the garage than here. So uh, that's where we use our propane. So we'll talk about what we want to do. But we want to turn that heat off <coughs> and that water off. <coughs> I have a question. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate. Go ahead. Who's our vendor? Uh, White Mountain. We negotiate, we go for bids, we get a good price. It was 150, Nine. 159 yeah. for propane. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to have to go into non public because we've got a legal issue we have to talk about. It won't take us long. And then we'll talk about mail bills and adjourn. Okay. All right, so, all right, let me read this, Brian. Uh, we're going to go into non-public pursuant to RSA 91A colon 3, uh, which has to do with legal action. Three dash two. Litigation that has has been brought against the town. Okay, so let's all there. I I roll call. You made the motion. You're I can second it. Yeah, so he may have had but I yeah. just All in favor? Aye.
11. New Hampshire Municipal Association, the 2019 membership dues are $1,071. And we have a bill from Rod Wood for $2,162.50. Um, he lists here it's for general assessing and then new construction pickups 2019. Do you know if he'll be able to let me know when he's doing the reevaluation work? Do we think he'll break that out? That would be helpful. We can ask him. It's going to be a statistical reevaluation. He's not going out to visit houses. So it's all office work. Yeah, but he can break that bill out. Sure, but you're going to see office work. Well, I see general assessing. You will split it any way you want. Okay. So I'm not available the next time he's in, probably. Could someone ask him to do that? Yes, be clear, please. So could someone ask him to break out when he does assessing the reevaluation work? As opposed versus, to the, as opposed to everything else he does? Yes. So that we can break it down by the budget? Understand. <coughs> we have a request from the Wakefield Food Pantry for the, they were appropriated um, $2,000 and they're asking for the first thousand. And then Virginia has a spring, Lakes Region Spring Hunt um, workshop and her attendance for $50. She originally signed up Jennifer, but Jennifer's not going. Um, Metro Municipal Group, we owe thirty-four dollars and eight cents. That's the lowest. <laughs> and another one from George Sansusi, which is two thousand two hundred forty-nine dollars and thirteen cents. And that's all I have for bills. <coughs> Challenging our assessment of their goals. Uh, he's two ninety an hour. These people, so they're not uh, cheap attorneys. Even associates are two twenty five. So they're they're out there. And that's our share. They prorate it against all the towns that are that they're doing work. I'm gonna stay with us. That we stay with. That is not this. We're going to talk no. about this in a second. No, 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 no. This is because we get a calendar. And we get to attend their meetings. And they're in there. Mm -hmm. And it's with, in the budget. And we tried to go without it once. And after three months, we, we signed up again. So, I'll make, okay. I'll, make, I'll, make, I'll make a motion. We pay the bills as red. No school bill? No, no. Cool. not until the first of next month, and it's a biggie. Yeah, biggie, biggie, biggie. Okay. Um, a second motion? All in favor? All right. Okay. So here's the tax lien, and then two pages. Assessor. That's 
we've got an application for current use. Um, block 1, map 29, 24 acres, book 1563, page 0015. So location is Application for a property tax credit exemption. Um, it's a veteran's tax credit. Um, map 10, lot 60. In all the information there. So that's good. What do we say? Another veteran's tax exemption, um, tax credit. Uh, let's see here. Doesn't give a uh, map number. Um, property address is 20 foot Drew Farm Road. Sears, what what names for the application? Any other comments? You can make a motion on the current use one or do we? I don't think we have to. I don't think we have to. I think those we have to, though. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you, folks. Thank you.